Hey guys, welcome back. In the last video, we went ahead and got all of our HTML together, our HTML and CSS for our bootstrap template. And now what we're going to do is take that and create a WordPress theme from it. Now what I have here is just a, a blank default WordPress installation. I literally just installed it. I haven't changed or added anything. So if you want to get up to speed with with my environment, you just need to get WordPress installed. All right, and it's easy enough to do. You should, I'm guessing you know how to do that. So just get that set up. And what we're going to do is I'm going to, in my text editor, I'm going to just add that uh, WordPress folder as a project folder. Okay, so mine, I'm using AMPS for Windows. So my uh, server is going to be in my C drive and then AMPS and then www. And this is WordPress dev. All right. So what I'm going to do is open up the WP content folder and then the themes folder. And this is where all of our WordPress themes go. So what we'll do is create a new folder here. And I'm just going to call this WP bootstrap. All right. And there's two files that are absolutely needed in order for WordPress to see your theme. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and create those first one is going to be an index.php file. Second one is going to be a style.css file. All right, so we're going to start with the style CSS. This is where we need to put our theme declaration. All right, and let me just show you what I mean. So we'll say WordPress style.css. All right, so in the documentation, if we look at this right here, uh, this is a declaration. You can have things where well, you, you need the theme name. I think the theme name is the only thing that's actually completely required, um, but you can have all these other things, the author, the description, license, you can have tags, all kinds of stuff. So what we're going to do is copy that and paste that in. We're going to change the theme name to WP. Um, WP bootstrap theme URI I'm just going to put uh, techguymedia.com author feel free to put your own name author URI I'll put the same thing you can put whatever you want for this for description let's say simple bootstrap WordPress theme version I'll keep as 1.0 license GNU that's fine that's fine uh, I'm gonna get rid of the tags and then text domain will just say tech guy media all right and then we'll get rid of this all right and you don't need all this you could just have the theme name and that would be absolutely fine all right, so let's go ahead and save that. And now what we'll do is go to our WordPress backend and go to appearance themes. All right, so now you can see that we have WP Bootstrap available as a theme. Now it doesn't have an image like these other ones, so we can go ahead and add that. All you need is an image that I believe has to be 1200 by 900, or it doesn't have to be, but that's ideal. And you will have that in the project files in the GitHub link below in the description. All right, so what I'm going to do is just grab that real quick. Okay, I'm going to open up my uh, file explorer and go to my server. And we're going to go into the theme folder, WP Bootstrap, and I'm going to paste in screenshot.png and go back and reload. And now we have a screenshot. All right, so let's go ahead and click activate. Now the theme is activated. If we go to the front end and reload, we're going to get just a, a blank white page, okay? Because we have a, we have no code, we have nothing um, for our theme yet, okay? So let's start to build that up. What we're going to do is open up the theme folder and also the HTML folder um, of the the template that we created in the last video. All right, we're going to do a few things. Okay, so the, the JS folder has the bootstrap JavaScript. 
we can copy that whole thing and we can bring that over the css has the bootstrap css and our custom style css what i'm going to do is in the theme we're going to create a css folder and we're going to bring over the bootstrap css now i'm not going to bring over the style.css because we already have one in the root of the theme so what i'm going to do is open that up copy everything that's in there and then open up our style css which is in the the root here and we're just going to paste that in right here okay and then we'll save that okay so with that the next thing i want to do is open up our index html file that we created in the last video okay and then what i'll do is copy everything that's in that and bring it over to our index php file in the theme save that okay now if we go back to our front end and reload you should be seeing the html that we pasted in the php file now the css isn't showing because we don't have that we don't have it linked correctly so let's go into our index php and go all the way to the top okay and go to where we have our css files and in order for it to see the root style css we need to change this and what we're going to do is just say php blog info which is a function and then we're going to pass in style sheet underscore url okay close the php tags and then if we go and reload now that style sheet is is in effect now it's just the custom style the actual bootstrap style sheet isn't yet so to do that we need to go to where we have that and we're going to add right in front right here we're going to say php blog info and then we're going to pass in template underscore url all right and what that's going to do is it's going to find the location of the current template and then we're just going to say slash and keep this css slash bootstrap because we have that right here all right so let's save that and reload and now that's in effect okay so our style sheets are set up now we have to just take the static template and start to add dynamic content to it all right so first thing we're going to start at the top and work our way down we have this html tag and you can see we have this lang attribute well we can actually make this dynamic by replacing it with php language attributes okay that's a wordpress function that will uh, insert that language attribute dynamically all right next thing we have the the char set the character set so what we want to do is put in php blog info char set okay save that now if we go and we look at the source code you can see that our lang is there it's being generated dynamically same thing with the character set okay so next thing we have the viewport we can keep that's fine uh, description author that stuff that's optional um, what we can do here is in the content we'll say blog info description Okay, that'll make it dynamic but if you want you could put static text in there that would be fine uh, we're going to get rid of the author and this um, icon thing all right now for the title you don't want to just have some static text in here we want for one we want the site name so we can get that with blog info name Okay, so if we save that and we look up here at the title when I reload we get WordPress website okay so that's what we have is the name of the site and you created this whenever you installed WordPress and you can change it from within the settings now I also want in the title the page name or the page title and we can get that let's put a pipe character here and then I'm going to say PHP WP underscore title okay so that gets the current page title but you'll see if we reload here 
we're on the home page which doesn't generate a title. If we were to go to the sample page that's included, you can see now it has the title. So what I want to do is test to see if we're on the home page and if we are, then we're going to put the description in the title. So we can do that. Let's go ahead and just separate this a little bit. And I'm going to say PHP and we're going to use something called is front page. Okay, we're going to say is front page. And if it is, then we want blog info description. All right, if it's not, then we can put a colon here, then we want the title. All right, so let's see what that gives us. Okay, on the home page, we reload, and now you can see we get the description. All right, so that's how I take care of the word the title in a WordPress theme 99% of the time. Now we're just about done with this head section. The last thing we want is we need to put in a WordPress function called WP head. And that's really important because when you use some kind of third party plugin or widget or whatever it may be, if it has stuff that needs to go in the head area, this is where it's going to be put. All right. Even to just give you an example, let's take a look at the source code without it. Okay, so you can see that in our head area is just everything that we have in the theme. Now, if I go and I add that and we go back and reload, you can see that there's a lot of other stuff that's been added by other, um, whether it's widgets or plugins, whatever it may be. Okay, so that's really important. Now, when you do that, you'll also notice that you get this indent above the theme, and that's because this is where the admin bar is going to go. All right. Uh, when you're logged in, even in the front end, you have this admin bar. So to, for that to be able to show, we're going to go all the way to the bottom and go right. Uh, let's go right below the last footer tag here. And we're going to say PHP WP underscore footer. Save that. And then if we go back and reload, now you can see we get the admin bar. Now, the last thing I want to do before we go is I want to break this, the index file up into a header and a footer file. Okay. Cause those should be separate. So what we'll do is from the very top, we're going to go down. Uh, we're going to go down to where the the nat this blog masthead where that ends right here. Okay, so that includes the head. It also includes the nav bar. So we're going to go ahead and cut that, and then we're going to replace it with PHP get header. All right, save it, and then we're going to go into our theme folder and create a new file called header.php. And we're going to paste that in. Okay, so if we save that, we go back and reload, it should look the exact same. Now let's go to the very bottom of index. And we're going to go from the very bottom up to where the footer starts. And we're going to cut that and then replace it with PHP get footer. Okay, and then we'll create a file in our theme called footer dot php paste that in save reload and everything should be good all right and then in the footer we can make this a little dynamic uh, what we're going to do is let's see we have this paragraph uh, let's replace that okay we'll get that out and what i want is to we'll do a copyright and we want the year, but we can make this dynamic. Instead of just putting the year, we can say PHP echo, and we can use the date function. And we can pass in a Y, which will give us the year. All right. And then for the site name, we can just say PHP blog info name. All right. So if we go and we look at the footer now, can see we get 2016 WordPress website. 
all right actually you know what let's put the the actual header in the header file so if we go to our index page and let's see we have this container starts then we have the blog header so what we'll do let's take from this div up cut that and then we're going to go and include that in the header as well okay and we want to make sure it's at the very bottom save it reload okay now we want this to be dynamic the h1 and the paragraph so what we'll do is replace this with php blog info name and then this here we're going to replace with php blog info description Okay, so now if we go back and reload, now we're getting the system name and description. And we can change those if we go to the back end and go to settings, we can change those here. Okay, we'll say uh, WordPress blog. We'll say the best, the best website ever. Save it, go back, reload, and you can see that that's changed if we go to the bottom it's also changed in the footer so in the next video I'm gonna show you how we can implement a menu so we can have we can create pages from the back end and we can create menus and then add uh, add pages to the menu and then we'll go from there alright so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next part